So the stand we're hunting in today is set up on the edge of a green field, and this year I'm going to be doing some experiments. So recently in Alabama, they passed a law that allows you to hunt over bait. And from my experience in looking at game cam photos, the bait definitely increases the deer activity, but it doesn't necessarily bring the bigger mature bucks in. Most of the time they just come through and eat it at night or in really low light situations. So we're going to test out some different types of bait this year, and then also hunt out of some stands with natural food like acorns and a hardwood bottom. So the morning hunt started off pretty slow. Eventually we had a couple does come out and even though we had corn in the trees over to the left the first deer that came through preferred the grass and they were out there grazing in the field But anytime you put bait out, you can be sure that the buck that we call Roly Poly is going to show up. <laughs> and look at this young buck. He's never skipped a meal. Looks like he's about 200 pounds and he is not an old deer. You can tell by his face how young he is. So we're going to let Roly Poly grow for a couple more years. And he should turn out to be a stud. So we had some other younger bucks and more does come through. It was kind of a mix. Some of them would go to the corn, some of them would eat the grass. And again, lots of deer activity, but we didn't see any mature bucks on this first hunt. So the next morning we got in the woods before daylight and we were hunting a stand in a hardwood bottom that is notorious for nice mature bucks passing through right at daylight. About 15 minutes into the hunt, a giant walks out and he's about 80 yards out and these bucks are extremely smart. He's moving really slow and making sure to check out everything around him. I don't think he ever busted us, but at this point you can tell he sensed that something was a little bit off. As most of you hunters know, things almost never go the way you want it to go. And unfortunately, he never did close the distance and get within shooting range. So that afternoon we wanted to go back to the stand with all the deer activity and it was more or less the same. We had a lot of deer moving through there, different young bucks coming through. We hunted about five hours that afternoon and still saw a lot of the same thing. Does, spikes, and deer just grazing through the grass and then every now and again feeding around the corn. So the next morning we were going to be hunting the hardwood bottom again and we felt like we needed to do something a little different to change our luck. So we put out a sweet feed about 35 yards away from the stand hoping to just entice him in a little bit. And about 20 minutes after daylight he slipped in on us. Let's watch it unfold.
All right, my shot was just a tad bit low. We're right here on this hill. But I see the arrow and the deer went right back here. Got hair, plenty of blood. He should be down right down there in that bottom. All right, we let that one lay down for about three hours. We're about to go in and check him out. Liz is the good luck charm, so we got her with us about to load up. So we had a really good blood trail that was easy to follow for about the first 200 yards and then it kind of started getting spotty and we'd find some here and there. And at this point, rather than messing the scent trail up, we had a guy that was close by with a deer tracking dog so we called him in for help. So I learned a lot about tracking dogs and basically there's two different ways that a dog can track. Some dogs are trained to follow a blood trail while other dogs are trained to track a scent gland that's in the deer's hoof and it only puts out a particular scent whenever the deer is injured. So in some cases dogs can track deer for miles even without a blood trail. So the tracking dog followed the deer trail all the way down to a creek and we were hoping to find the deer there. We're not sure if it laid down in the creek or what but that's where the dog lost the scent trail and couldn't ever pick it back up on the other side. We searched for about five hours on the other side of the creek hoping that the dog would pick back up on the trail but I'm Unfortunately, it never did, so we called it quits for that night and had a plan to come back first thing in the morning. So the next morning, we brought in two new dogs, and at this point, it had been 24 hours since I took the shot, so I felt like my odds of finding it were going down a little bit, but the good thing about having two dogs, especially search dogs like these, even if there's not a good scent trail, the dogs can cover so much area, and if the deer's down anywhere in that vicinity, usually the dogs are going to find it. But we started them off in the creek area where we had left off, and one dog seemed like it got on the trail for a little bit, but it was just kind of a hot and cold trail. So we just did a lot of searching through different areas. So a couple hours into it, we felt like we had completely searched the area where the deer ran off the direction it was going and felt like it had to have turned at some point. So we we're about four to five hours in of searching. The dogs did great, but they started getting tired. We definitely ruled some areas out, but we could not find the buck. And at this point, the dog handler is kind of thinking that the buck is still alive. And so we called it quits for that morning search. So at this point, I was definitely disappointed because I felt like it was a pretty good shot and the deer was probably dead. I had hopes because we had one other guy that had very good success. Even after other dogs had been in search and his dogs were just really good at picking up on one specific scent, even if it was a day or two later and being able to track it. So our last hope was in two pups named Jace and Cy. So right off the bat, one of the dogs named Jace picked up the scent trail. And if you've never watched a tracking dog work, if their nose is right there on the ground, they're hot on the trail, but if they ever lift their head up, that means they're kind of searching and looking for that scent. But as soon as we put Jace on the trail, he followed the exact path that the deer took all the way down to the creek. And now this was the moment of truth. Jace crossed the creek and picked right back up on the trails. And so that was huge because at least it let us know which direction the deer went. So we sat back, we had these GPS devices and we were able to just let the dogs work. Found a roosting spot. Wrong species, but hey, we'll take it for spring research. So just a quick update, the dogs have tracked probably 500 to 600 yards. One of them was dead on a trail, pretty much in a straight line, nose to the ground, which is impressive because we know we followed the blood trail and that's where it ended. That dog stayed directly on the trail. About 600 yards later, we're down here in a bottom that we have not even looked in. So starting to get a little high hopes. Now this is where things got complicated. So everything was going great with the tracking until the dogs ran into a giant rattlesnake on the edge of the field. And the interesting thing about these dogs is they will attack snakes. So the owner was telling us anytime they see them, they try to attack them. So now here's something else I found really interesting about these dogs. One of the main reasons they track is because they love finding whatever it is they're tracking. In most of the cases it's deer, but sometimes it's hogs, but they enjoy the final process of finding it. So watch what happens whenever we try to hold these dogs back and they think they're missing out on the best part of the hunt. Man, that shows you how passionate these dogs are about their owner and whatever it is they're tracking. So the bad news is after all this commotion and getting rid of the rattlesnake, we were never able to get Jace back hot on the trail again. So 
we were at a dilemma. It was getting dark, the dogs were getting tired, so we decided to throw one last Hail Mary and go through a thicket. There's absolutely no way. And he just said, where's the thickest spot? Oh my god. Oh. Good Good Oh, that's him for sure. That's the last second too. We had given up. Good job, pup. Good job, pups. <laughs> And folks, that is unbelievable. That's why you never give up on a deer. More than 36 hours later, the dogs let us right to them. Unbelievable. So I want to give a huge shout out to Art and his two dogs, Jace and Cy. Folks, words cannot explain how excited I am right now. But if you live in Alabama or even the Southeast, the way I found these guys is through a Facebook group called Nose to the Ground. You can get on there and they'll list out all of the dog trackers in the area by county. A lot of these people will come out with their dogs for free, but please, if anybody comes out and assists you with tracking your deer, I'd really suggest paying them for their gas money and their time, and maybe even a good tip for the pups. Now it's definitely time to go sell Celebrate, folks. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along with all of our outdoor adventures. See you all next time.